my whole life up. I'm pressing in. I'm pressing in. I'm going on. with our Father, Amen. with our God, because we were shut out of His presence. We had to go through some yes. kind of prophet or priest. Oh, but this is a day and an hour that He wants to be up close and personal with yes. us. And He's got a vengeance against everything Amen. that stands in our way. That means something's going to shake in your life. Okay? Something's going to shake in your life. Amen? Because if it's not supposed to be there, God's going to make it go. He's going to make it leave. Yes. The line of the tribe of Judah is taking its place. Amen? Judy has taken his place. I'm going to explain to you a little bit tonight about what repentance does, Amen. how you enter into his presence, and the price he paid for us was so that you and I could become one with the character and the nature of Jesus Christ. What God put in Christ, Christ put in us. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And so we need to understand in the spirit realm how this thing works. There are real spiritual things that are happening all the time around you. There are spiritual Spheres. There's uh, voices that speaks all the time. I can be around somebody and, and let's say that they, they say cuss words. I never have had a cussing spirit. But sometime during the week that word will go float through my mind. I go, where in the world did that come from? It's because I've been around somebody else that had that spirit of profanity. Amen? And we've got to condition ourselves to be protected from the influences around us. Amen. And it's getting darker and it's getting worse, isn't it?
so that he can fellowship with you so he can download into you. And this mode of transportation doesn't go anywhere it wants to. It sits there sometimes. Hallelujah. It is prepared to take you where you need to be when you need to be there. See, I came down here with a backpack and a carry-on. That was it, y'all. Mm -mm. So if you Thank you. 
Uh -huh. Thank you. Now the word new in uh, Hebrew is kodash. And it means something brought into being. Cool. Something new brought into being. It's being born at that moment. Something new being born at that moment. Now I want to tell you a secret. They tell us. Tell us Hallelujah. On. I want to tell you a secret tonight. Yes, yeah, tell us. You might say, you know, I've said this scripture so many times that he would give me strength to overcome her. He would always be with me even to the end of the world. Or I've used all these scriptures, but let me tell you something. Every time you say this word of God, you're using a different, a new breath. Amen. Are you hearing me? Yeah. You're not doing it with the same breath yesterday. You're not claiming it with the same thoughts of yesterday. Right at that moment, as Jesus is breaking the bread 
getting the wine ready, they're still under the old covenant. Matter of fact, it was Passover. Amen? Amen. And little did they know that that night would be their transport mode into the new thing. Yeah. But it was going to cost something. Yeah. They didn't understand it. Jesus totally understood where he was going. And he broke the bread. And flowing through his veins at that moment as he broke the bread and the blood was the new thing. But it was still encapsulated in the natural. The blood had not been released. <laughs> before they manifest in the natural. Amen. Yeah. Amen. But that blood that was flowing through his veins that night was already on that bread. And already, hallelujah, yes. it was already there Amen. prophetically. Yes. They didn't understand what they were dealing with. You and I don't understand that sometimes you have to go to Gethsemane and you have to agonize all night long and you have to be there in the prayer closet weeping before the Lord saying, God, not my will, but thine be done. Because right now flowing in my veins is the very blood that will cleanse the world. Flowing through my veins right now and intact is the Because the angels of the Lord went back and yeah. picked up every drop of that blood from Gethsemane all the way to the tomb. Every drop of blood that was shed out of that precious body of the new covenant, hallelujah, that was released is still ready to be infused into you and I. And when you could have a whole okay, here it comes. Here it comes. Hallelujah. And when you get into a place where God begins to show you what's holding you back. Judah, and you say to him, 
yes. Say God. And he will roar. Yes. And he will devour yes. that thing. Yes. 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 And in that moment, you walk out into freedom and into liberty. And you're able to get back in that trust. You're able to get back in that transport chair and go where the Holy Spirit leads you. What a price he paid. What a God we serve. What a Jesus that paid the price for you. swallowed the bread and the wine. Do you know he took that old covenant to the cross? Yes, he did. It was inside of him. He ate that. He drank that. And then he crucified it. And he said the old covenant is dead because the new thing has to come forth. The new thing has to come forth. And sister, your new thing is coming forth. God is releasing the burdens of the last ten years. And he's beginning to move and stir the Yes. 
We just read a scripture that said he put his sins behind his back. Where he put it into the sea. There is no such scripture that says in the sea of forgetfulness to be remembered and no more. But there are scriptures that say the same thing in different ways. Yeah. Jeez. Behind the back of God is that roaring lion. And he's waiting to come out of that throne and consume and devour the thing that is holding you back. He is a jealous God. And in this day and hour, he will have no other gods before. Amen. 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 Yes. yes. I want you to turn with me to Psalms 138, 1 and 2. Y'all feel the presence of God in here tonight? Yes. Do you know why? Because we broke it during the song service. Yes. yes. Do you understand the spiritual dynamics of what I'm talking about? Yes. Yes. If we come in here and we come in this and, and just bring in the same old attitude and the same old tiredness and everything else, you're going to get the same old service. Yes. But if you stop and you're Yes, again. Psalms 138. My God. We're living in a world full of idolatry, yes, yes. false yes. gods, yes. false images. You know what? You can find out who somebody's God is real quick. Yeah. Real quick. Yes, again. It's in the music they listen to. Yes. It's in with what they watch. Yes. It's within what's in their checkbook. Yes. You look at those three things right there and you'll know exactly where they lie. They haven't been to Gethsemane. I said they haven't been to Gethsemane. They haven't visited the dark hour of the soul. But they're going to and they're going to do it with him or without him. I don't know where you stand tonight. But I don't want to go through that dark night without Jesus Christ right next to me strengthening me. Hallelujah. But the gods of this world are taking over the church. They're Say God. And then they look at Jesus out of Gethsemane crying and weeping and they go, oh, I got grace. I <laughs> said, how can you escape if you neglect so great salvation? Okay. Do you hear me tonight? Yes. How can you escape if you neglect so great salvation? Jeez. Jesus told this story and he said, there was a man and he sent his servants back to the vineyard. And they killed the servants. And then he sent his son and they killed the son. And he said, what do you think is going to happen? And the Pharisee says, they're going to kill. He's going to kill those wicked men. Let me tell you something. That is the condition of the church today. God is sending a message and they're rejecting it with their lifestyle and their life choices. They're saying it's okay right. for me to do this. It's okay for yeah. me to do that. The same God that had the same laws 2,000 years ago yeah. feels the same yeah. way about yeah. it today. Yeah. He is up close and personal yeah. and behind the truth. Yeah. Jesus is in your face tonight. Yeah. And he's saying, who are you going to serve? If you serve me, yeah. I will take you higher and I'll show you who I really am. But if you choose the idols of this world, then there's nothing That's the word. That is nothing but the truth. Ain't nothing but the whole truth. Psalms 130. I feel like we're back in our revival again. Amen. 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 Start it all over again. Right back to fire on the altar. Amen. Amen. Psalm 138, 1 and 2. I will praise thee with my whole heart. Before the gods, I will I sing praise unto thee. I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. I like the way it says in verse 1, before the gods. You are positioning yourself between God and the gods of this world. And you're looking at their influence and you're hearing their voices, but you got to praise Yeah. 
my way. Get out of my way. That was a good one there. Out of my way. I'm going through. spirit. Yes. It is everywhere. But let me tell you something, and this is good tonight. Hallelujah. There's millions of people worshiping false idols and false gods. Yes. And you might say, what good is my little praise? What good is my little worship? I will praise him. You oh, just read it. Yes. I will praise him. Oh, Hallelujah. I will do it. I What happened when Moses went before Pharaoh and he threw this rod down and became a snake? And Pharaoh, come on, you know where I'm going. Pharaoh yes. threw his down, but what happened? Moses is snake. So don't you tell me just your little praise. Don't you tell me just your little worship. Because every time you open your mouth, you praise the Lord and the worship and the serve him. Yes, yes. I got chills all over me. My God. Thank you, Jesus. Bless. When Jesus was taking the Last Supper, he said another thing. He said, I will not drink wine with you unless, until I drink it anew. Did I tell you he's going to do a new thing? Yes. Come on. That was good. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. He said, until I drink it anew. He said, I have to finish this covenant. I have to finish it. He said, I've got to go all the way with it. But you know what happened? <laughs> Three or four days later, yeah. praise God, when he rose from the dead, yeah. hallelujah, and he had allowed that blood to flow out, yeah. he walked with a couple men on the road to Emmaus. Yeah. And there they was walking. They didn't know the new covenant had already started. They didn't know the blood had already been shed. They didn't recognize that he was in Jesus. That's all right. That's all right. That's all right. That's all right. Let him burn. Let him burn. Let it burn. Let it burn. Let it burn. 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 Got to let it burn. I tell you, there's nothing better than the Word of God. Nothing better. Y'all go ahead and go to your movies. You go ahead and watch your TV. I got something going on better here. Hallelujah. This word is rich. It's powerful. Hallelujah. It'll get you motivated. It'll get you going. And it'll eat up the steak of the enemy. It'll eat up every My God, my God. Look at God. Look at God. Let me tell you something. We know that God's fixing to do something, and He's already doing it. He done we it. all know that yes. God has positioned you and given you promises. But let me tell you something. Some of you can't handle what He wants to give you. Yes. And He can't give it to you because.
because you can't handle it. My God. Are you hearing me tonight? My God. God wants to do all kinds of things, but what happened with the men that have the talents? One man buried his talent. One mm. man had two and doubled it. One man had five and doubled it. And God, Jesus came back and he said, what happened to you with the one man that buried his talent? If God was to give you a million dollars tonight, how much of it would go into your pocket and how much it would go to the kingdom? Talking real sense to us tonight. Amen. Amen. We all talking about wanting God to bless us financially, but all either either our faith is short that we just want to pay our bills, or we are selfish and don't care about the kingdom of God, and we just want to have a little more technology going on in our house. We just want a little better cell phone. Come on, that ain't what God's going to the Lord. Do you know that lion is pacing? Yes. He's ready to roar and he's going to swallow up this stuff. He's going to swallow up this junk. He's going to swallow it up and it ain't going to be very pretty because out from underneath the floor of God is a man with a slaughtering weapon in his hand. It tells us in Ezekiel that that man, everyone who's serving God, has a mark on them. Yeah. Oh, you think the devil's got the mark of the beast? I want you to know that God's got a mark too. That's right. He mock his people. And whoever's not marked is going to be slaughtered. And the great slaughtering weapon is getting ready and getting sharp. I can see it right now in the spirit realm. And a lot are going to be people who go to church. My God. Some of them are as wicked as anybody else. Even more so. How can you sit under this word? How can you sit under service after service and go out and look just like the world and sound just like the world? How do you do that? I can't Because there's so many points that I want to make. That's all right. Jesus. My God. When you're partaking of the newness of God, you're not excited about earthly things. They come up to you with a new iPod, it don't matter. Amen. They come up to you with a new flashy car and it don't matter. Because when you're seated in heavenly places and you're partaking of the new thing that God's got going on, hallelujah, say, God, give me what you have to give me to do what I've got to do. But that's all I care about. Let's get the harvest in. Let's go out there with our combines. Yeah. Jump on that thing and begin to get the harvest in. Because the hour's late. The night is coming when no man can work. There you say. Yes. Jesus. Oh, God. Oh, God. Jesus said he would have it anew again with them. He's having it anew with us tonight. There is a presence of God in here. And it's not just so we can say what a great service or what a great sermon. No, no. He is transporting you to a new position in the spirit realm. If you like to watch TV more than you like to pray, then something is wrong. If you spend more time having fun with your friends than you do with the Lord, then who is your bridegroom? I want to ask you tonight, where is your heart? Where is your attention? God has provided a new thing for you and I. And if we walk away from it, we're going to be found guilty before the throne room of God. Yeah. It's time that we take it very serious. Uh, and if yeah. God's going to give us all this stuff, you better start making a list of the missionaries that you need to support. You better start making a list of the ministries that need to be taken care of. You better start taking
covenant. We got a new drink. A new drink of real blood and real body of Christ. We got a new tomb. Are you ready for the next one? Yeah. Well, you know, Paul said, I die daily. Yeah. Which meant every day he went to that same tomb in the spirit realm. And he said, I realize the pathway here. I have to die daily. I have to go to that new tomb and take up new truth every day. New truth shows me where my dead areas are that need to stay in the tomb and where the resurrection power needs to be transported into my life. And every day he knew to go to that new tomb and die and take on new life. And die and take on new life. I'm telling you, when the line of the tribe of Judah comes out from the throne and he eats that sin out of your life, you talk about you talk about freedom. You talk about getting rid of slavery in your life. But it don't get no better than that. Amen. Amen. Yes. Yes, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. New death. Yes. Jesus said, except you eat and drink, you have no new life. You have no life. Yes. Hallelujah. Time to feed on hope and life that comes from the resurrection, that comes from the death. It follows the same process year after year. Yes. Now, we talked about the new wine, but let me tell you something else that is new. Yes. He said, don't put the new wine Run into a no. box. No. Did I tell you a minute ago, some of y'all can't handle what God wants to give you? Uh. You want to put that new wine in that old bottle, and I ain't talking about how old you are, okay? No, no, not that. I'm talking no. about the old flesh. Yeah. The flesh. The old attitudes that you carry around day after day. You're getting the Irish up in me. Come on, ain't got nothing to do with the Irish. It's a devil. Talk, call it what it is. Amen. Call it what it is. The Irish. Blame everything on the Irish. <laughs> <laughs> he said, don't you understand that if I put this new wine in your old bottle, that it's going to burst? Yes. Yes, it will. You can't handle it. You need yes. to start praying. God, you need to prepare me. Make me a new bottle. Uh -huh. Make me into a new bottle so that you can pour your new wine in me. Yeah. I need to be a new bottle. I can't. I know that I can't represent Christ and go out there and act like the devil. I know I can't represent Christ and have moods. Come on, girls. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Come PMS time. It's time for you to get your battle gear on. Come on. Uh -huh. Oh, yes, I did. Girl, girl up. Got to girl up. <laughs> sin. I don't care how you feel. I don't care what your mood is. And I don't care what you went through with grandpappy 20 years ago. Either. Amen. Come on. This has to do with a new bottle. Yeah. Hallelujah. We need a new bottle, sister. Yeah. We need a new bottle so he'd pour that new wine in us. Yeah. Hallelujah. Otherwise, you're going to be standing there like the five foolish virgins with nothing in your lamp. God couldn't pour it in your lamp. Hallelujah. Because you weren't ready. You weren't prepared. Well, it's about time over. Yeah. It's time to be ready. Yeah. It's time to be ready. Yeah. And I'm telling you tonight prophetically that the presence of God is going into homes yeah. right now and into churches. And he's seeing who's ready for the new wine. Yeah. He's seeing who's ready with a new bottle. Hallelujah. He's seeing who's ready to put down the new tomb and put down the old thing and rise up in resurrection life. Yes. Are you ready for another new? Yeah. Despise not the day of small beginnings. Small beginning. Yes. That's what it said. Oh, but I've been doing this for 10 years and God ain't promoted me yet. Well, I wonder why. What's going on that he hasn't been able to promote you? Or maybe you're just not happy being with his presence. You think you got to be out doing something. Let me tell you something. There's a time for everything. But I'll tell you one thing that I have learned. Spending time with God is the most valuable thing that I've ever done with my time. It hasn't been in making the dollar. It hasn't been in being seen. It's not here standing here. has to erupt out of that, has to come out of that. 
out. It comes out of the seed that goes into the ground, and then it springs forth. Yes, yes. Mm. My God, my God. Number six, new tongues. Jesus. He said he came to give us new tongues. You know what they've done with tongues these days? They put it in the side room. In a room, that's right. But don't you be giving no prophecies in here. Don't you be speaking in tongues in here. We've got a special room way in the back on the third balcony out there. That's where you can go speak in tongues. Don't you be doing it in our church, interrupting our services. And don't you dare shout. Better not. Don't you dare get a chill and shake. And don't you dare let any of that stuff in here. Because we are, we are all up and coming. Up in there. And you are old. <laughs> First thing. Yes. But you're doing old fashioned. It went out in 1950. Oh no, it didn't, honey. I'm still shaking. I'm still quaking. I'm still speaking. I'm still shouting. I'm still carrying the glory in my head. I'm still letting it go on. Just take that, huh? Amen. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Hey, quick and shake it. I'm Pentecostal born and bred, and when I die, I'll be Pentecostal again. Amen. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder if charismatics didn't come along to put the fire out of the Pentecostals. Mm hmm. Yes. Yes. Sorry, I just wonder that. Sometimes. Yes. <laughs> okay, we'll move on. A new commandment I give you, yes. new, that you love one another. By this shall all men know that you are my disciple. That's right. I tell you, loving one another isn't easy. Because like I said a few minutes ago, the free will hits their free will. Come on, we still go on there, amen? We still get there. But he said, this is a new commandment I give you. See, you can't hold it in that new bottle, in that old bottle. You can't hold this kind of love in that old bottle. Hallelujah. You've got to have a new bottle yeah. to be able to love somebody. If you've got to love your enemies, you better love your brothers and sisters. Yeah. I said, if you've got to love your... Y'all ain't listening to me. Yeah. 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 Y'all yeah. have yeah. to yeah. love your enemies. Yeah. Yeah. You've got to learn to love your brothers and sisters. That's right. A new commandment I give to you. There's nothing new about what Jesus brought. He brought a new covenant. He brought a new cup. He brought a new law. He brought... Who did I buy tell you? It's called the royal law of love. Yeah. All right. Oh, can't understand it. No. Amen. The devil can't understand it, and that's the best part. Amen. Because you're speaking things in the spirit. spirit. No wonder the devil wants it in the back room. No wonder he has to have someone else in here. That's right. He wants it. Hallelujah. Listen, you ain't got enough ties to persuade me to leave my Holy Ghost behind. Come on. But some people are sold on that idea of what people accept and don't accept. Amen. Do you know that the Holy Ghost and tongues is for the unbeliever? Yeah. Read it yourself. Uh -huh. Listen, I was back in the days when we'd shout our hair down. We'd dance all over the place where the Holy Ghost would come out. We'd speak in tongues and there'd be prophecies coming out of the audience and people would shout and dance and praise the Lord. I came out and you know what? People came in just to watch the ruckus, just to see what was going on. They ain't never heard. Yeah, they made fun of it, but some of them got the fires. They want to Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yes, they did. That's fire burning. It's for the unbeliever. Don't you be ashamed of your tongues. Amen. Amen. If you go to churches that don't allow it, you need to get out of there. Because anybody's trying to bridle the Holy Ghost is mm. in trouble already. Yeah, <laughs> Because the Bible says I would praise thee with my whole heart. Oh, oh, oh. Hallelujah. Yeah. As Pastor Lisa said, in closing. <laughs> in closing. <laughs> Hallelujah. He's going to give us a new name. Amen. Come on. I'll never no longer call you forsaken, but I'll call you Beulah Mary. I'll no longer call you forsaken. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. He said in Revelations 2.17 that he's going to give you a new name. Name means nature. Name means nature. He's going to give you a new name, a new nature, a new bottle. I hope you're catching this tonight. Hallelujah. And his nature is love. So not only is he giving us his nature, but that nature contains love because God is love. Amen. into another area. I have faith for short legs. Anyone ever comes in here while I'm here, you've got a short leg, get up here and it'll get healed. God has given me that. Hallelujah. And you've got areas that God has given you. You've exercised faith in that area. Don't let it go. Let it flow into new realms and new areas. God wants to give you a beginning power. And next time you say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, remember you're saying it with a new breath. It's not the same breath. You said it with yesterday, last year, two years ago. You're saying it with a new breath, a new zeal, a new flow, a new power. Hallelujah. A new co-op. Yes. Oh, I love it. Yes. I love it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Put on the new man. Amen. Put on the new man. Lay hold of the blood of Jesus as you confess your sins. As you confess the areas in your life that need to be worked on. Hold on to the blood. Because every time you receive a new endowment of the blood of Jesus, you are introduced to a new power and a new authority in your life. I hope you're catching this. This is key. I said every time you lay hold of the blood of Jesus by confessing a sin and asking the line of the tribe of Judah to Uh, eat that thing and devour it, you're laying hold of a new power and a new authority (coughs) in your life. I believe that if we understood this, we wouldn't be able to wait to get to our prayer closet and say, God, get that lion out here and devour this because I want some new power going on. Yes, yes. Oh, hallelujah. See, every day we miss a word of kindness that we could have said to somebody. Every day we miss that relationship of giving him thanks and praise when things go wrong. Every day we miss areas and times that God is saying one thing and we're doing another. And every time you miss that, then you need to go to God and take that lion blood on and begin to let that power begin to work in your life again and take on new authority and new rulership. Hallelujah. How can God entrust you to rule over people when you can't rule over your own spirit? Do I have to follow you home sometimes and point it out? I don't think so, you got the Holy Ghost for that. That's right. Leading God. Amen. Leading God. But every time God puts his finger on that thing and says, see, right there, 
right there is what I'm talking about. And you say, ooh, shut my mouth. Yes. And you say, right there, okay, God, I will write that down. Whatever that was, that snide remark. Hmm? Uh-huh. Come on. Yes. Yes. Write that down. Today I felt this when I did this. Okay, God, why is that? Why am I doing that? What kind of spirit is compelling me to do that? Because I want the line of the tribe of Judah to come and take that. So I want to turn it this way and that way and turn it around and examine it and see where it, where it came from. Did I get it from somebody that I was raised with? Did I walk into it when I was in high school? Where did it come from? And I want to get rid of it. And next time it starts to rise up, I want to ding, ding, ding. In closing, number two. Uh, I like that. You can't plead the blood of Jesus without repenting. You cannot have access. You cannot access the yes. blood of Jesus without repenting. Yes. We want to go around and plead the blood of Jesus over demons and devils, but we haven't repented. We don't have access to it. Do you understand what I'm saying? Hallelujah. In order to have access to the blood, you need to be covered with the blood. Yes. Only the blood can touch the blood. Only the blood can access the blood. Only the blood can go in and change. Hallelujah. Only the blood can do it. So you get baptized with the blood of Jesus, and then you can access the blood and plead it over whatever needs to be pled over. Amen. Amen. Man, these are important Hallelujah. keys for warriors to have. It's time to do a new thing, to allow God to bring us into a new thing. And the resurrected fire is on the way, and it is in the blood, and it is in the power in the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Repent, repentance brings the glory back as our covering. Yes. Because when Adam and Eve walked in the garden, I'm giving you the whole thing tonight. Whenever you walk, when he walked in that garden, they were they were covered with the glory. Amen. And when you take the blood on in repentance, and you walk in that state of taking the blood on, that kavod, that same glory that was on Adam, comes on you. And you know when you're walking in it, because you feel that yeah, overcomer yeah, yeah, yeah. spirit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You feel yeah, that yeah. Power. power. You feel that nothing can get in your way. You know uh -huh. when you're walking in that kavod glory. And when you're not, that means you need to take another dose yeah. of the blood. the new man Amen. we can be renewed, renewed. Yes. the Bible says in Revelation not one church he said you've left your first love mm -hmm. that's another number new love. new love you've left your new love your new love Amen. and he always tries to tell us and remind us how excited we were when we first got saved. What it felt like when everything looked new. How precious it was to be in His presence. How you couldn't wait for another prayer meeting. You couldn't wait for another TD Jakes conference. You couldn't wait for the next new thing. I mean, you was excited about it. You wanted to be part of it. You didn't want to miss it. Because you had that first love. That new love. Yeah. And He said, this I have against you. That you've left your first love. It's time to put on our new love. And be ready and positioned for warfare. And for more glory and more power. Let's stand to our feet. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And if you don't, uh, if you want to, you should get one of these DVDs. And I always tell you that because it's new every time you hear the word. Right. I just told you. The breath you use to say the word today is a different breath yeah. from what you're going to do tomorrow. It's going to be a new breath and a new mercy tomorrow. So you need to listen to this message. You'll catch things you didn't hear tonight. Amen. And maybe some rascal in your house will hear it. Rascal. Amen. <laughs> and maybe God can do something in their lives. It'll yeah. set an atmosphere. Right. I said it'll set an atmosphere in your home. I want you to raise your hand and say, God, I want the new thing. I want the new thing. Give me a new bottle. Give me a new bottle. Let me operate. Let me operate. In that new vehicle. In that new 